What's up? We're back with week four of the Little Cup World Cup, and this time it's India versus U.S. East. And on our side, we're using a pretty famous core. We're using this weapon triangle of Abra, Trapinch, and Porygon. And the idea is that you can really pound a lot of the steel types like Ponyard. So, for example, you can sacrifice Abra to Ponyard, trap with Trapinch, and then Porygon can win the game. And to add a little more spice to it, what we've done is we're, we've made the Porygon Berry Juice Porygon instead of the more standard Choice Scarf Porygon. And what this lets us do, it gives us a lot more flexibility. So with Berry Juice Agility, we can also become a sweeper. We can kind of bluff our opponent. So maybe our opponent thinks we're Choice Locked and we can surprise them. So a lot of options open up when you use a Berry Juice Porygon, which is a really good set in its own right. And that's basically the idea of the team. Abra, Porygon, Trapinch, make this weapon triangle, and then try and attack. And you can see here how well it can work. So we have the only normal resist is Ponyard. So it's a very easy situation. Trap it with Trapinch, you win the game. And typically versus uh, this uh, Pori Pinch course, uh, people like to use Trapinch to trap Porygon because Tri Attack does not one hit KO. Porygon. So you can take 80% from Trapinch, but ultimately you will be able to revenge trap Porygon. But because we are Berry Juice, we can switch our move to Ice Beam and then one hit KO the Trapinch. So this is really valuable, especially if you can trick your opponent into thinking that you are in fact Choice Scarf. So the game is going to go relatively straightforward. We're going to see the classic Mian food uh, stuffs, uh, U turns, knockoffs, very standard. And the key moments in the game are going to be revolving around the situations where Porygon can actually trap something. So here we see Trapinch uh, trap a low health Mianfu. Porygon comes in here, it gets a boost, we go to Ponyard, it's at low health right now, and here's a tough situation. Do you Sucker Punch? Do you knock off? He gets a Predict right, he Sucker Punches on the Porygon, Trapinch is going to Revenge kill Ponyard here, and now you go to Porygon and you get your boost, you bluff Choice Scarf. So he switches Marini on the Ice Beam, and from his point of view, he's thinking, okay, cool, I've weathered the storm, Porygon has to switch out now. So he makes a mid-ground play, he goes to Ponyta on the Ice Beam, so he can set up a Flame Charge, so he can start going and starting to attack with Ponyta, that's his plan. But we are the Berry Juice Porygon, we switch our move, try attack knocks out the Ponyta, and it's a very tough situation because now the Weapon Triangle is in play. Because he goes to Ponyard here, but... You know, if Ponyard faints, it's over. Porygon is going to be able to beat the Trapinch Marini combo. So Sanjay makes a really good play. He sacrifices Abra to Ponyard. So he gets hit by the knockoff intentionally. And now he switches Trapinch and he uses Psychic here because he knows if he dies to the Ponyard, Trapinch traps, Porygon wins the game. So he Psychics knowing that the Ponyard has to switch out. He knocks out the Trapinch, a little fortunate to get the crit, but the idea is the same. Now Ponyard comes in, it's going to be able to Sucker Punch the Abra, but now uh, Ponyard is going to get trapped by Trapinch. Uh, knock off here, he probably could have gone for the Iron Head Flinch, it's unlikely, but he could have gotten two flinches to win maybe. But ultimately you're not going to be able to beat the Porygon now. So the Weapon Triangle was in full display right there, Abra, Trapinch, and Porygon. So India takes a 1-0 lead versus the US East. Now we head into game two, which is my game. And again, I've covered this game in much more detail in a previous video. So I won't go into too much depth here because I've already done it. But the key moment of this game comes down to uh, Mianfu versus Frillish. Frillish is the Tyrant counter. So it's very important that you keep Frillish healthy. So we see the high jump kick here and a knockoff. He lets Frillish get knocked off. Mianfu goes down. And it's a 4 on 6, but it's not a true 4 on 6 because of how powerful Tyrant is now. Tyrant is basically unstoppable now that the counter was knocked off. So we're going to see Frillish get sacked at some point, and Tyrant is just going to be able to sweep. Nothing can really touch it. Pharaoh Seed is going to be doing, you know, 60%. That's about it. Yeah, 63. And you can't really stop it. Pharaoh Seed is going to get knocked out. Mianfu can try and fake out. And eventually enough fakeouts will defeat Tyrant, but you have to sack your entire team to keep switching out, faking out, switching out, faking out. And after you sack your entire team, you're finally able to defeat the Tyrant. But then now you lose to everything else. Ponyard uses an Iron Head, Grookey uses a Grassy Glide, and it's over. That one pivotal mistake of losing Frillish, and Tyrant is able to 
basically almost sweep the game. So India takes a 2-0 lead, and now we go into game 3. In game 3, you're going to see the power of Diglett. So, if you look at Surfy's team, he's pretty weak to Diglett. You know, Abra can be weak to Diglett if it's not Focus Sash. Marini can be weak to Diglett, or definitely is weak to Diglett. Ponyta is weak to Diglett. And the, really, your way of offensively threatening Diglett is with Grookey. But Grookey is completely walled by Fungus. So this Fungus Diglett core is looking really, really potent. So we're going to see the Mianfu Mianfu uh, game. Mianfu Mianfu. You're going to see that a lot in Little Cup. Trade of Stealth Ox here. Fake out here. He goes to Fungus here on the Grookey. Grookey reveals Protect which means it might not have acrobatics typically. He goes to Mianfu scared of the acrobatics, but Grookey uses U-turn and basically reveals he doesn't have acrobatics. Then we go into another Mianfu Mianfu situation. We've seen that a lot so far in this game. Fake out, wins the speed tie there. Fake out, fake out. And now we're gonna see Diglett come into power. They both use U-turn, but now Mianfu is going to be able to U-turn into Diglett, Diglett is going to trap Marini, and Surfy does not have a way to punish Diglett. He doesn't have a trap inch which can counter trap, and his Grookey does nothing versus the Fungus. So he has to go to Mianfu here. Again, we see the Mianfu Mianfu play. Fake out into the Mianfu. Fake out here. And Chrome Music reveals that he is actually a really, really bulky Mianfu. So he's able to live the high jump kick, go to Diglett, knock out the Mianfu, and again, how do you punish the Diglett? You can't, because your Grookey is just completely walled by Fungus, so you're not going to be able to punish the Diglett at all. And as you continue, uh, Pharaoh Seed gets sacked to Ponyard, because you can't really switch into Ponyard when Mianfu is gone. Then Slowpoke is going to be able to uh, Thunder Wave the Ponyta. Mianfu gets uh, sacked here. And now Diglett is going to be able to trap the Ponyta here. Diglett traps the Ponyta. And again, you go to Fungus, but what? And the fact that he didn't go Abra makes me believe it's not Focus Ash. We won't know for sure. But he goes to Grookey, and Grookey is, such, is at such low health that Diglett is able to one-hit KO with Sucker Punch. And now because of the grassy terrain, Abra is going to be able to live the Earthquake. If he wanted, he could have Sucker Punched there, but he didn't need to because the game's already won. He can check with Abra, he can check with Slowpoke. And Life Orb Diglett really put in the work there. It got a one, two, three, three, four kills, right? It got four kills, Life Orb Diglett, and there was no punish. The only punish was Grookey, and Fungus completely shut it down. Then we enter into game 4, India's leading 3-0. And again, we're, we reuse the team of Abra, Trapinch, and Barrier Juice, Porygon. And it's again a similar court. Ponyard, if it gets trapped, will open up the doors for Abra and Porygon. But a complicating factor is that Frillish can also wall Porygon. So this is mainly going to be about Abra. If you can get Ponyard trapped, it won't be Porygon. Like in the previous game, Porygon did all the work, but here Abra is going to be able to do all the work. So we're going to uh, skip through a couple turns. It's a similar Mianfu, Mianfu, U-turn type thing. But the key moment is going to be when Ponyard gets sacked right here to the opposing Ponyard, but now Trapinch is going to be able to revenge kill Ponyard here. So Iron Head fortunately doesn't flinch. Earthquake knocks out Ponyard. And now look at Finchinator's schemes. It's really weak to Abra. Because Shadow Ball can hit Natu. Shadow Ball can hit Frillish. Psychic can hit Mianfu. Psychic can hit Coughing. Psychic will one-hit KO Grookey. It's true that Grookey can Grassy Glide, but there's no switching to Abra right now. So it's going to be really tough to actually deal with the Abra. And again, the Grookey offensive pressure walled by Fungus here. So again, the U-turn with Life Orb means it cannot touch Fungus. It's very unlikely to have... For example, acrobatics. Trap inch here gets sacked. And now you go to Abra here, but Shadow Ball is way too threatening. So you have to sacrifice coughing. And every single time Abra comes in, you're going to have to sacrifice something. You go to Frillish now on the Hex, I believe. Yeah, Hex. Just a little more pivoting around. Very difficult to switch into knockoff here. He high jump kicks the Mianfu here. And now it is really, really tough. Again, offensive pressure with Grookey, who cares? You have the Fungus that can check it. You have to be a little careful not to get uh, chipped down too much, especially without an Eviolite and, you know, Stealth Rock. You have to be a little careful, but ultimately you can handle everything Grookey has to throw at you. Abra comes in, knocks out the Natu again, 
and it is very, very tough to deal with a psychic type when your dark type gets trapped. Shadow Ball here, 72 on the crit crit did not really matter because Mianfu is going to be able to knock off next turn anyway. And Mianfu U-turns here, Fungus walls the Grookey, and India takes a 4-0 lead and we enter into game 5. And we're, this is a Generation 6 Little Cup. Um, I've mentioned this before, but Fletchling um, has Gale Wings, which is not nerfed in this gen. So it's basically a flying spam team versus Sticky Whip. But Rufflet can be a match winner because it can set up really easily with bulk up and nothing can really touch a bulked up Rufflet. So if you can get the bulk up going, Rufflet is going to be really dominating. Hidden Power Fighting Porygon is also going to be really strong, especially if you can get that sticky web up. Ponyard can be wall, can wall Fletchling. You have to be careful about Fletchling, that's the main threat to the team. But Ponyard can pretty comfortably wall it, you just have to be careful about Ponyard's health. So you can't lose Ponyard's health versus, you know, something like Fungus or Vullaby. You have to keep your Ponyard healthy, and that's a strategic decision you'll have to make. But it's basically going to be about beating Fletchling and using Rufflet to win. So Kumkaboo Super, he gets a burn on Mianfu in exchange for losing the EV Light. I think that's a pretty fair trade strategically, because... That burn is valuable. You're going to get a burn on Fungus as well, which is valuable. Get poisoned here, a little bit unfortunate, but using Pumpkaboo to burn two Pokemon, overall really valuable. Ponyard comes in, and he makes a strategic decision that he values the Stealth Rock more than getting poisoned here. I mean, sorry, getting uh, slept here. So he wants the Stealth Rock for Fletchling and Bullaby, and he makes that decision that he is okay with getting slept. Uh... Sir skip switch, Gali went for the predict, trying to use Diglett to trap the Ponyard, but he makes a really good play, goes Sir skip. And he's going to be able to Scald here, and that burn is actually bad. And the reason is because Vullaby can get a Suicide Defog off. So, just to clarify what that means right now, Sir skip moves first and can Sticky Web, but Vullaby is going to be able to Defog. Sticky Web, Defog, Sticky Web, Defog, Sticky Web, Defog. But eventually, Vullaby will get the last laugh because it will die after using Sticky Web. So imagine if Vullaby was not burned, eventually Defog would run out of PP. But here, um, Vullaby is not going to be able to do that. So he switches out Rufflet, which switches in Rufflet, which does not make a lot of sense. You would have just probably um, knocked out the Vullaby there. Because, and the reason this is bad is because it lets your Rufflet get knocked off for really no gain. You could have set up on something like a Fletchling or Diglett, but setting up on a knockoff means you lose a lot of your bulk, which is just not worth it. So you do set up a bulk up, but you lose your Eevee Light. And now you get hit by an Iron Head. You superpower here, but then you lose your attack, you lose your defense. And now Fletchling is going to come in, and the Ponyard is sleeping now, so you do have to be careful. And he uses Roost, which does not make any sense, because now Fletchling can one-hit KO. Because say you predicted the sword stance. You should have just attacked. And say you predicted Fletchling to attack you. Well, Roost wouldn't have helped you anyway, because you would have died in one hit. So using Roost uh, did not make any sense. And this is probably the most frustrating thing. It looks like um, our, our player did not know that Fletchling is not a fire type. So he's sacking literally everything before going to Ponyard, which is still at 100% health. And he even early forfeits. And that's the most frustrating part, because even if he accidentally went Ponyard, he would have been able to realize, oh, I actually win. But he early forfeit before even going to the 100% Ponyard, which can deal with Fletchling. You might have to get a little lucky with not sleeping all the time. Uh, but yeah, really frustrating to early forfeit on top of all that. Sacking your entire team and then early forfeit too. So US East comes back in the game. They're down 4-1 now. India up 4-1. Now we enter into... Game 5, which is a black and white Little Cup. And if you look at uh, Issa's team, it's kind of weak to a lot of common typings. There's no flying resist. The water resist is Carvana. You know, it's a really weak to a lot of common types. The fighting resist is Ghastly, which can get trapped by Pursuit in a lot of cases. So the bulk is really dependent on Porygon being able to use its huge bulk to uh, defend against threats because you don't have any natural resistances to a lot of threats. Uh, fighting and normal don't really offer a lot. Carvana is really frail. Diglett is really frail. So you're not really offering a lot 
defensively. So we're going to see uh, Abra Mianfu, but Is gets a really uh, nice play where he's specially defensive Mianfu, which is EV to live the Abra Psychic. And we are not Focus Ash, so we get knocked out here, so a really good play. And even if we were Focus Ash, Diglett would have trapped. So a really good set, specially defensive Mianfu, which ev to live the Abra. And now you go to Ghastly, and now the problem is really apparent. You don't have a Water-type switch in, so you knock off the Staryu. Okay, cool, but now what? You have to go to Porygon. Mianfu comes back in, puts pressure on that Porygon. And now you go to Ghastly, knock off here, and this is really the problem when you rely on Porygon for everything. Really a lucky Will-O-Wisp miss. You turn on the Ghastly, and now there is no Fighting-type switch in. There is no Water-type switch in. There is no... Flying switch in, there is no ground switch in, there is no normal switch in. Literally every stab attack is not going to be able to be resisted. That is immense pressure on Porygon and it's unsustainable. Porygon cannot deal with every single threat. It's just not going to happen. Uh, a little acute play here to trace natural cure so you can, you know, trace, trace. There is no normal type switch in. Mianfu comes in, uh, makes another Mianfu play. There is no fighting type switch in. That's going to be a one-hit KO. Uh, you try to go to Timber, and Timber can use Bulk Up, but ultimately Drifloon can Revenge Kill. And really smart, he's not going to Drifloon immediately because it might be Ice Punch. He's taking no risks at all, and he's going to sacrifice Hippo just for the free opportunity to go to Drifloon. No risks. Even if he predicted Drain Punch, he didn't want to take the risk of what if it had Ice Punch. So he's going to sacrifice uh, Hippo here. And now he's going to go to Drifloon, and there is no Flying Resist. So he tries to go to Porygon, but it's unsustainable. You're not going to be able to deal with all this power. Acrobatics, 50%, Sandstorm, uh, racks it up too, and ultimately Drifloon is going to sweep. You can't deal with it at all. And India wins the week 5-1. There were a few more games played after this game. But those were not really relevant and they weren't played with full intensity because the week was already over. So I'm not going to cover those. But yeah, India wins the week 5-1 and we're looking like we're going to make the playoffs, which is really fun. And as always, if you like this type of recap content, make sure to let me know and thank you for watching.